I wish I would lose something. Give me something to fight for, but I, I, I got a lot to fight for. So, uh, but I don't mind losing anything because I know if Allah gave it to me once, He can repeat it. Alhamdulillah. Sweet basil. I ain't gonna tell you what, I can tell you what you do with sweet basil. Now, sweet basil, you can put this in herbs, fresh. It don't handle heat well, but uh, chop it up, put it on stuff, fresh salads. Eat it with tomato and cheese. Uh, uh, eat it with all kind of stuff. The base basil is just great. You can infuse oil. You can heat up some oil in a pan and drop the basil in the oil, and it will infuse that oil. You can keep that oil in your refrigerator, and it and whatever you drizzle that oil on, whatever you drizzle that oil on. I got a lot of basil because I knew basil was gonna be popping. Right, it's another bag. You can get another bag of basil in there. Uh, I need one more. <laughs> And, and read, read to me the nutritional value. It doesn't have basil. Yeah, this is more basil. Yeah. So anybody else want basil? I got plenty of basil. I need one more in the bag. Okay. One more. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your generosity. Alhamdulillah. This is ours. I did this for us. Yeah, we did it. You gave it away. Yeah. Okay. Vitamin K is the biggest thing. Vitamin K is the biggest thing in basil. I didn't even know that. Uh, I don't, K is for your eyes. K so is this my, for your blood. And your blood. You see, clean your blood, right? Make your blood. Uh, make produce blood. Keep your blood, that's it. Okay. But there's more where this came from. Uh, it's, this is, uh, oh, this is cilantro. Now, I'm going to tell you something about cilantro. Cilantro is an amazing plant. Cilantro is an amazing plant. You know how that dandelion blows seeds out, and it seems like wherever them dandelions are, more dandelions going to come up if you don't pull, pull them. Cilantro produces a seed, a little brown seed. And uh, wherever that seed falls, all it needs is time. It's gonna, more cilantro is going to come up. But let me tell you what they do with the cilantro seed. You harvest it. Have you heard of coriander? If you eat lamb, chicken, beef, coriander is on everything. Coriander is a, it's one of my favorite spices. You grind it up, it's in all Thai food. I make my own Thai spice. I, I, I'm going to talk about that later. I grind, freshly ground my coriander, cumin and all that, my chilies, all of that. Um, but the coriander, if you want to plant this, don't go back, well, they, they might get mad at me, the capitalists, but it ain't but a handful of here. They, they can lose a couple of pennies. Uh, don't go buy that little packet for a dollar fifty on the shelf with the 50, 60 seeds in it. Go to the store and get you some whole seeds for like two or three dollars, a, a couple thousand seeds in the spice on the spice rack. The same seed that's on the spice rack come in Sam's Club, a big old container. Grab a handful and throw it. You have a field of uh, of cilantro going. Coriander. The seed of cilantro is coriander. So anybody want some cilantro? You're making tacos. Now we put this on all kind of stuff. Uh, anything Mexican, anything uh, Latino food. Uh, it's just good. Cilantro, fresh cilantro. Now, now, now. Some of these just pull the stalks out of there. Use the tender leaf. The stalks. The Indians use the stalks uh, in, from India, like Pakistan. There's not a whole lot of that. But I got more of that. It might be another bag in there. I don't know. But, okay, this is all yet. Okay. Uh, they take the stalk and they uh, they blend it in a blender, and they make and they put black pepper and. Uh, and cardamom and something else. No, it's a uh, it's like a uh, a dip or something. They put hot pepper. I'm not. It's not that. I'm not too fond of it. That's why I can't tell you what to do with it. But the, they use everything: the stem, the leaf, and the seed. So, Corey, whenever you think of cilantro, don't think. Don't, don't just think Coriander. of tacos, huh? Coriander. Coriander. Yeah, coriander. Now this is something I love. This is a, a special basil here. This basil, they call it, uh, uh, I think it's a Japanese, uh, I think they call it Japanese basil or something. Yeah, Japanese basil. It's just like the regular basil, but it's more pungent. I can smell it as soon as I pull it out. It's way more pungent. And one little piece of this, uh, now if you like chicken broth, 
get you some fresh herbs, cut you some chives up, a little chicken broth, throw, throw some fresh herbs in there. If you like mushrooms, onions, or whatever, throw that little bag in there. Uh, I buy fish sauce. Some people use anchovies, but the Asian market, they have uh, in the Asian market section of your store, fish sauce. Little, some people don't like fish sauce. Okay, well, don't do that. Use chicken broth or something like that. <laughs> and instead of eating a lot of meat, just get you uh, uh, a can of clams or a can of, uh, or get you, you know how we get on the Red Lobster, we like crab legs, everybody like crab legs and lobster and all this stuff? Okay, all right, well, I'm, from, I forget, I'm talking to the wrong group. This, we, that stuff used to be outlawed, just all of those bottom feeders. But, you know, my father, he didn't tell y'all, he was feeding us shrimps. <laughs> you know, I, we need no catfish. He stayed away from catfish for a long time until he discovered that catfish, they had some that they farm raised, and they eat the, uh, only the cornmeal off the top. They're not bottom feeders. And I don't know if you can take the nature out of a catfish just because you put something on the top. Of it. But, he, you know, but catfish is good, too. It's a real fatty fish, but... Um, but you can take a little bit of fish and some herbs and some broth and make a delicious comfort food, you know? Put a little, if you like butter, put a little butter in there, spice it up, a little olive oil. Uh, there's so much you can do with fresh herbs and vegetables. I made a roast the other day that I barbecued, actually yesterday. Uh, it was a lamb roast, but I slow roasted it in the oven. And my other brother here that told me, I didn't use this method. It's a method, a barbecue method, where you boil red meat to get real tender, then you put it on the grill later after it's tender to get the flavor and the smoke in. I actually slow roast in the oven, but I took two whole turnips, um, bushes, a bunch of handful of leaves on them, and the turnips, cut the root off the bottom, washed them real good. I threw them in the pot with the roast. Okay. So after nine hours, yeah, I cooked the meat for nine hours. <laughs> nine hours on 250. And I'm going to tell you something else. I like to share stuff with people because I can't eat meals with everybody. I wish I could have everybody eat with me. That's, if y'all ain't guessed by now, that's, that's probably my number one favorite pastime. That's eating. Eating. I think sometimes I go on diets and lose weight and exercise just so that I can increase my meal. So I say, man, I need these small meals. My wife give me these little baby meals. I know what I got to do. I got to lose some weight. <laughs> so I get a big plate next time. So, alhamdulillah, if you put a roast, one of the toughest meats you can find is a brisket, if you freeze it, freeze it solid, put it in a roasting pan, frozen, and just put salt and pepper on it. If you, we, we put herbs and stuff on it too, uh, dry herbs, we give it a dry rub, and something about putting it in the oven frozen, and let it slow cook for go to bed when you wake up in the morning. I said nine hours because I'm a heavy sleeper. I sleep ten hours if you let me. Uh, no, I sleep about seven eight hours average average a night. But uh, eight hours will do it, or nine hours. It, fork tender. It literally just you don't have to you know you don't even have to put your dentures in if you get if you, you don't have no teeth. The meat just it's just nice. It's just real nice. Brisket. So my lamb. I took the, uh, the turnips out of the lamb and uh, I put them in a blender. And I put some uh, curry powder in, there in the blender and I took some garbanzo beans. I opened a couple cans that they were already cooked. I know how to boil beans. I in fact like going through all that time. And I roasted them in the oven with curry on them. And I put it together and it's a delicious dip. You could just dip bread in there. And I cut up some of the lamb and put it in there. And it's a meal or tortillas. Uh, a lot of the people that come from the romance countries and things like that, they don't eat like we eat. They don't have a big pile of hamburger meat on their plate or a half a side of cow or the whole rack of lamb and all this meat. They take a little bit of meat, cut it into little pieces, and the flavor, you still get the flavor. doesn't matter whether you eat a whole stick of butter or just get a taste of butter, it's still butter. So that's how meat is. Uh, if you find these creative ways to season them and make them, you can really do some wonderful things and it's, and it's much better for your health. And it, you get a lot of pleasure from it. It's really a lot of pleasure. So if anybody wants some, uh, I only have, who's the, who the serious cooks are?